Hi folks, um, so in this video what we're going to do is we're going to do an axonometric projection question uh, whereby we're actually going to complete the junior search um, question from last summer 2022, okay? So you can actually see here is from the 2022 examination, I think it was on page 8 or 9, yeah, page number 9 here, where we're based, where we're given a problem that says the axonometric axes required for the isometric projection of the hand sanitizer dispenser are shown. It says the elevation end view, some call, sometimes called the end elevation, and incomplete, just reduce that there, sorry, an incomplete axonometric projection of the dispenser are given. So we're given the end elevation over here, you can see a curve, and we're given the elevation over here. And then it says a 3D graphic of the dispenser is also shown, so we've got a pictorial view down here, complete the axonometric projection of the dispenser. Okay, so this is essentially what we're gonna to have to draw inside in this space here. Okay, so I'm just going to refer to my sheet here. Um, in axisymmetric projection, it's very important to note, obviously, your axes. You don't always have to note them, but just to be aware of them. This here technically would be my y-axis. Okay, down here, would I have, I actually would have my z-axis, and this would be my x-axis. Okay, now in relation to actually doing the drawing, you can see here, if we take note of the object, it's um, it's kind of a square based, uh, well it looks like it's square based, it might be a rectangular based uh, kind of prism that has been extruded up and it's obviously got a truncation here at the top where it has been cut at an angle. And we've also kind of got this curved section where there's a little instep inside here. Now when I actually start building it, I'm going to start by building it from the bottom. And I'm going to imagine that this section here was not cut. So it's like I'm taking this section here and this edge down here. And I'd imagine that that was not cut, okay? I'm going to build it like that first, and then after that, I'm going to put in the curve. So, to start that, I would always use a little bit of indexing to help me find my points. So, on this space here at the front, I'm going to label it with letters A, B, C, D. I'd have maybe E and F. And then finally, this imaginary point down here that we're imagining hasn't been cut yet, I'm going to call it point G. So, based on my elevation here and my end elevation over here, I want to label those. So, A and B are here and here. Then I've got C, D, E, F. And then behind A, looking in this direction, behind A would be G. So, I'm going to do A, comma G there. Okay? Because they share the same relationship. Now, I want to label them over here. So, when I'm looking in this direction at the object, where is A and B? They would be here so it's a comma b up here i would have c comma d e comma f and then g would be down here okay now using that information we know you should know obviously at this stage if you're practicing this question how to complete an axonometric projection so what you're going to do is you're going to project at 30 degrees from the end elevation and the elevation and where those lines meet up so i can actually locate some points already if i wanted to find a you can see where a is here and here where they meet would be point A. Then for point B, I would have point B here. And likewise, for G is also given to us. If I follow it down, I can find G there. Okay? And I think I'm given one more. I'm actually given the letter D. You can see here. That there is D. So I need to find now C, E, F. Okay, so if I want to find C, C has already been projected down. So I need to project it down from my elevation over here at an angle of 30 degrees. So to find C, that's where C is. Now C should be directly above B. So if I'm accurate, D should line up in a vertical line. And I'm actually happy with that. It's working out perfect. So I can heavy that edge in. I know C to D is an edge as well, so I can heavy that edge in. So there's my front face of the object. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to find E and F. So to find E and F, I need to first of all project them down, I'll actually project them down from the end elevation first. So 30 degrees down here, like that. And then what I want to do is I'm going to project them down here. So where E hits this line, that's point E. And likewise with F. So I'm after put it right into my y-axis, but it's okay. There's F, there's E, and I know they connect up to each other. Make sure I have the exact point. 
F connects to C, D connects to E, and then E connects to F. And now E, we can see over here, should also connect down to our G. So these should be directly above each other in a straight line. It's a good test of your accuracy. Yes, once again, happy with that. Now, I'm not going to heavy in. I might actually just, I suppose, heavy in a little bit of it. Go down to about there, just to give the idea. So, there's the object, completed as if we imagined that curve wasn't in it. But now that we have that done, we have to put in the curve. So we can see the curve over here in the end elevation, where you can see it actually, from the bottom, it goes straight up for a bit before it starts to curve. And we can see we've actually kind of got a quadrant of a circle here. In relation to the elevation, our curve will be seen from this side over here, and this section here is our curve. And you can see it actually steps in from here to here. That's how far it steps in. So, a couple of ways you could actually uh, get points on a curve. You could break it up from the center points that they give you here. You could break it up into 30, 60 degrees and take the heights. But I think the best way to do this is actually to use ordinates. Okay, so we're just going to take cut sections. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure from the center up to here and just check what that radius is and it's actually 50 millimeters so it makes sense we're going to use ordinates we're going to split it up into tens so 10 20 30 40. now with those cuts what i would what i want to do do a little bit of sliding set squares here put one set square on it using the baseline as a guide what i want to do Project over like that, parallel to the baseline, because the baseline in this case is actually our horizontal plane, the ground. Okay, now using those as cuts, I'm going to use numbers this time to find points on my curve. So I'm going to call this one starting down here, zero. This point over here is one. Then I have two, three, four, five, and then to six. Okay, I now need to find zero to six on this face. Now it's very important, I'm getting the points out here on this face. So technically my zero, which is on the ground, will be in line with my G and my A. Then I have to find point one. So best way to do that is take your compass, take the distance from there to there, which is the same as the height from zero to one, and come over here, and mark that height off. Now I'm gonna come back here, and I'm gonna do the height for number one, or sorry, in this case, number two, I should say. Make sure you're 100% accurate. There's number two. I continue that sequence all the way to the top. There's number three. There's number four. Okay, number five. And obviously six is at the top already. So, number those, one, two, three, four, five and six now technically we do have a curve on the inside face as well because it has been cut in but if you if i'll just zoom in here a little bit you'd imagine that curve would kind of step in there like that and it would be a curve kind of like that inside it. now that curve that's on the inside we will not see it okay because the other face is in front of it and in axonometric projection you don't have to put in the hidden detail so now what we're going to do is we're going to complete that by simply using the same process of projecting at 30 degrees. So I'm going to start off, I'm going to project down my point number one. And pretty sure that one is kind of already found for us. Yeah, it's about there. Perfect. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to project down all the other points. Number two, number three, number four, number five, number six. So there's two. Three will be down there somewhere. Four. Five. And finally number six. And six will actually only go to there. Now what I want to do is I want to project them from this view. So I've got zero and I've got one. I should label those. There's zero. It's already given to me. There's one right there. I now need to find number two. It's going to be in the next line up. There's number two. I want to find number three. There will be number three. Want to find number four. I want to find number five. 
and obviously number six should be meeting up depending on my accuracy yeah there we go so there's number four number five number five was on this line and then number six so what I want to do now is as best I can I want to freehand sketch that curve so ever so lightly first trying to follow the path of the points and follow the curvature because there's a bit of a gap between five and six and then when you have the curve and you're happy with it as best you can try and make it flow so that it's not a kind of a hatched line There we go. That there is the curve. We're not completed yet though, not fully, because obviously we have this little section to get the line here and here. So this point here is going to be very, very important to us in our elevation. I'm gonna project that down at 30 degrees. And what that's, do, that's going to do is it's going to give me the first edge right here. And then from that point there, I'm now going to project up okay there you have it guys that is how you complete the 2022 uh, junior search axonometric question hope you found that helpful